a question from Ellie. How do you start when you're turning a play into a short story? Um, Ellie, a good question. Um, it's exactly the question I asked myself before I started this cake all this months ago now. Well, first of all, what do you do? You do the same, Ellie. You read the play. If possible, go and see the play, which of course I couldn't do, it was in shutdown, or look at a film or two of uh, the play, because there's films of um, most of Shakespeare's plays that you can, you can get. So I read the plays again, and that was interesting, because if I'm honest with you, I hadn't read some of these plays for a very, very long time, some since I was at school, and some really not at all. I'd seen them um, on, on the stage and on film. So I had to refresh my mind, and that refreshing was very, very important, and come new to it and fresh to it. So I read the play, and as I was reading the play, I would try to see it in my mind's eye, and I made little notes as I was, as I was uh, reading it of these most important points in the story, which you kind of mustn't um, miss out on because the, these points are the glue of the story that make it all work. Um, get to know it well. Uh, I, I think that was really important. The, the most important thing with, with any story is that you believe it when you're telling it. And it's quite hard when you're doing a retelling to do that because you haven't invented this yourself. It's another person's invention. And you have to almost climb inside the mind of. Um, in this case, Shakespeare, and uh, and kind of tell it with him, tell it with his words in your head, with his spirit in your head. But then, of course, from time to time, you you will you will be adding something or subtracting something. That's the way of retelling. It's it's sort of what happens. You have to make it your own. Uh, tell it. Um, let me. I'll just show you what I mean. Um, I've got here. I, if I can make my silly machine work, I'm not very good at these machines. Right. So there's a play I became very fond of um, during this retelling session, and it's called The Winter's Tale. And I, I knew the play, I'd seen it, of course I had. Um, and it was complicated. Very often his stories are quite complicated. They weave in and out. Nothing is simple with Shakespeare. He doesn't do simple. What he does is to tell stories uh, about the complexity of people's lives. And Winter's Tale is like that. I'm gonna read you the first paragraph, which is like a setup paragraph, um, just to give you some idea of the first thing that I used to say. I've read the play, I've got it in my head, I've tr thought it through, and now I sit down um, with my empty piece of paper, Winter's Tale, by William Shakespeare, retold by Michael Thingy. Here it is. It began well, a marriage made in beautiful Sicily, but in heaven too. Many said at the court of Leontes, king of Sicily. The king and his wife, Hermione, who was as modest and kind as she was glamorous, had always been the happiest of couples and so devoted to one another that it sometimes seemed they needed no one else around them, that they lived simply for each other and for their little son, Mamilius, their pride and joy. And soon there will be another child in the family, a perfect family and a perfect wife. Well, life ain't like that. And that's what this play is all about. It's about um, the unfolding of circumstance and how it affects those two who did seem to have everything and be perfectly happy. And the world fell apart. Well, you've got to find out what happens by reading either my tale but are still reading Shakespeare's play as well. But that's what I try to say. Read the play, see it in your mind's eye, as Shakespeare used to say, in your mind's eye, know it really well, and then sit down, and I just turn it down onto the page. And forget Shakespeare. That's very important. Don't keep Shakespeare's words in your head. Otherwise, you'll just use all his words all the way through, and then there's no point in doing the retelling. And it's quite difficult, I have to tell you, um, when you've read Shakespeare, to put his words out of your mind, because they have a habit of staying there. Thank you for your question.